Hello, welcome to another part of the platforming tool. And in this part, I want to tackle if we have a rotated cube as input. So here we have uh, like basic inputs, like we built this in previous parts. And what if now my cube is being rotated? So what I'm actually doing here in my system, I'm just basically taking like the Y axis, so the only in the height. So the reason for that is if I go into my tool, uh, we basically have here the extract silhouette option uh, which is then only again extracting based on an axis. So it's not necessarily looking if, if something was rotated or something like that. So that could quite be interesting to have because there are situations where, for example, I want to uh, have a plank uh, like so. So I want to have like a platform that connects like a upper part to a lower part. And that people could, for example, then in my city could walk on this part to then uh, reach other parts. So I want to now uh, go about a system that checks if a cube is rotated and uh, see how well and see how well we can handle that data. So what I'm going to do first in my system now is we need to make another loop. So I want to check before I start my system, are there planks that have rotation values? So I'm just going to make a bit more room and we're going to do a loop. And in this loop, we're basically going to use the uh, for each connected pieces, but I already have this node, so there's no need to like calculate this multiple times. So I'm going to delete that, and we're going to then uh, have that over here. So I'm doing just this in a separate loop. So what I want to do is uh, I want to actually create the bounding box. And there's a good reason why I want to do this. So here, I will enable here to uh, click the orientation of the binding box. So you can see that the binding box will uh, orientate to like its best fitting uh, position. But what is quite interesting with this binding box node is that we can also here export a XForm uh, attribute. So this XForm here is stored in the details. So you can see that this is actually a matrix, a four by four matrix. And this contains the data that was needed to make this sort of like bounding box. Um, so we can use this now to our advantage. So if my bounding box would be rotated, I would know in this data that we actually have to deal with rotations. So what I will do is I want to now copy this attribute. So we can, for example, use a copy attribute. Uh, we can also just use a wrangle, uh, whatever you're familiar with. So we can just say copy attribute, and I want to say copy the X form. Uh, or we can already have that here. So we don't need color, just X form. So now in our base shapes here on these basic cubes, uh, we now have this uh, exact X form. Now to make things also a bit more visual, I'm also gonna here go to my loop and I'm gonna say uh, enable single passing and I'm gonna uh, view my cube that is being rotated like so. Uh, this will actually be a bit more clear. Uh, so you can see that if we uh, here enabled again the orientation bounding box, we are just like, having perfectly that bounding box with that rotation rotation value. Now we can do something pretty cool with a, a node called a transform uh, by attribute. So transform by attribute here. So it's going to use that X form attribute and it's going to use that to then transform my object. So the only thing that we have to do here is we actually need to do an inversion. And doing now this inversion, it will actually now being laid out flat on the grid. So this is exactly what I want. So we have now this node that can convert my rotated plank into like uh, being sort of like normalized into the grid here. So if I now have this as output, we then now will be able to then perfectly run our system. So we will output like this plank. So the only problem is to actually like uh, set this back to its original position. Uh, so we need to again transfer this detail attribute. And instead of now saving this on the details, I want to save this on the primitives. The reason why I want to save this on the primitives is because we will have uh, multiple objects here. Like you see, like we have uh, two objects here. And it's better than if I have multiple object objects is than to save the data directly, for example, on the primitive other points. So we're going to do a promotion. So attribute promote. And we want to promote here uh, the value uh, from detail to primitive, for example. So we're going to say promote that value. Now, once we have done that, we then again, uh, we can, for example, do the copy of attributes. So we want to copy this value. So remove this, call and call this uh, X form. 
and we also want to then rename this to uh, for example the original x form so original so original x form so now under primitives i now have this um, matrix value so now we have that system in place we could also argue that this setup is not always needed so in case our inputs uh, like we have here like these two cubes or they actually don't need to be run through this whole setup uh, because it's already in a good position for my tool so we can start to actually also build a switch node that automatically switched uh, between using this setup or not and we can use like a quite simple uh, way of doing this um, so for example here so I want to uh, place down a split node. So are we going to use the split by uh, normals? And we can look specifically into the y axis, of course. So if there are primitives in the up axis, and we're just going to set this value to one. And based on this node, we can then know if my input actually has uh, primitives that are rotated. So we're now going to go to a switch node. Uh, we're going to say here add uh, spare inputs. I'm going to drag in this split node. So we're going to say get the amount or the number of points or primitives. You can choose uh, uh, what you use. So get the points uh, from our spare input, which is minus one. So a zero means uh, look at itself. Minus one means look at the spare input. And if this is equal, for example, to uh, zero. So in this case, that's your input. So we have a cube that is being rotated. Uh, we will basically have no... Uh, primitives here which means that we have a rotation and this value uh, will be then one so when we have when we don't have any points so when we don't have points in our input we're basically going to switch this to uh, this setup here now what is still important is to actually add a very basic uh, x form value on this side uh, because we still want to then use an x form value later on but we're just going to use a basic x form I could, for example, now just like to create attribute and so on. Uh, a very simple way, if you're not sure what that value would be, is to just place a box, place a bound node, and we can just say calculate uh, the bounds and x form, and then you basically now have a very basic uh, x form value. So you can see that these values are quite uh, neutral. So you can just use that. This also then. Uh, has to be uh, promoted and copied so i'm going to copy paste this over here like so and we can connect this over here we can also now structure this a bit better by frame so this is for example when uh, rotated input and this is then uh, for example when it's not rotated so here we then can say not uh, rotated input and you can also give this also colors uh, if you want it so we can give this a color so this is for example when it's rotated you for example give it an orange color when it's not rotated it can for example be green and that's now see our results and we can uh, disable the single passing now and we should basically see this so now we can visually actually really see what's going on. So the green is actually not being changed and then the orange is actually being uh, changed in its location. So now our tool perfectly calculates, but we need to restore that original position. So we're going to say again, single passing. So I want to specifically focus on this one and we want to now uh, get back that values. So what I'm going to do now is first of all, uh, I'm going to do a renaming of attributes. So we actually renamed uh, these values here, uh, original X form. So I'm going to copy paste the name. And we want to say to the primitives, because we stored it in the primitives, if you, if you would remember. Uh, so we want to say that, you want, that we want to rename this back to uh, X form. So here, rename that back. So we're actually now restoring the original names. Then we also want to do a reversing step again of promoting this back to the details. So we want to promote primitive to details and we want to promote the X form. So now we have this all back here uh, and that. And we want to go all the way down here where we have the merging node. And we want to then just do a simple copy of attributes 
the copy attributes. So we want to copy the detail value of this of this part into the other part. Uh, so we want to copy the X form. So we have these values over here. And then we want to again do that uh, transform uh, by axis, uh, transform by attributes. So we're going to place the node. And by default, as you could see, it's like going back to that position. So this is then actually, uh, as you could see, this is back its original position as expected. And this is then the new output actually. So we can just basically give this another frame. Uh, this can then be like a restore original position or transform. That might be actually better naming. So that's also disable again, uh, the single pass in here. And we now have that new result. The colors are also still here from what I created here. Uh, we can just simply do like a delete of attributes here. So delete attributes, and then we can just say delete to color. So we're getting rid of that. This is just like a great way of checking if everything went right. So there might be situations where you might want to tweak some of these values a bit more. If you would play around with it, you might notice that currently you might have something like this. So you can see that it sometimes has troubles to find out like the correct uh, location to have this uh, platform. So let's take a look and uh, see where that issue happens. So we can look here at what happens already here at our first loop is checking what our root cubes are rotated. And we can see that our uh, big platform here is actually rotated in the wrong way. So we can try to adjust values and maybe make around and maybe implement a couple things here and there to make sure that we always have the right rotation. But we can also use something different. Uh, and this is actually a lab tool, which is called uh, straighten. So here, this node will be able to align a certain object based on what a uh, primitive group, for example. So we're going to create a group first of all as well. So make group, we're going to just use the inputs over here. And maybe for viewing now, let's also go back to like single passing. So we're viewing the big cube here. And we want to then now capture uh, the primitive. So we're going to also call this then uh, top uh, prim, so top primitive, and this needs to be based on angle. So we're going to extract top primitive, which is of course uh, in the Y axis only. And we're going to now choose the angle value. So I think somewhere around 30, 35 will be good value. That also means that my tool will only be supporting those angles. So you can tweak this, um, so you can tweak this or you can make this into a parameter but around this value, it's, it's often pretty good. So now we have this information and we're going to plug this in the straight to note. Then once we have that, we want to then also say to the uh, straightening node to use actually this top primitive. So it's now guaranteed that we'll use the top primitive. Otherwise, uh, the tool can work without this group node, but it will actually start to choose uh, the top primitives for you instead of having like uh, manually choosing them. Importantly, again, here is we want to work with XForm attributes. So we want to output XForm and I can use this now. So if I want to sort of like plug this into my current system, I would basically have to grab uh, this part over here. So those two lines and redirect them. So if I make it a bit bigger, uh, we are now overriding that. So those two parts here are basically quite similar. They only have like some different uh, results. So you can see that now my cube is rotated in a correct position. Here it's rotated in another position. So let's now use uh, this uh, part here. And let's now further go into our system. So we have our right cube. And let's see how well that would work now with our current results. So let's also go and view uh, my input here. And I can see that it's actually uh, rotated in the other direction. And we actually might want to uh, inverse the transform here. So actually choosing uh, the inverted version of that. And now we can see that we now have actually a more reliable way of rotating this. So you can see that it's actually following really well, except of course, if you're going beyond that 35 degrees, uh, then you can see that it's not really holding up anymore because of that degree. But other than that, it's holding up really well. Uh, that's a decision you have to make uh, for your tool how many rotations do I need to support? 
so you can start to build up different things on how much needs to be supported so now let's go back to my loop and we can just uh, enable all the passings here again and our tool works uh, like expected so we can play around with that i can make this uh, very thin i can make this larger uh, if you for example see something like this happen that basically means that our poly expand value needs to be higher so we can just put this for example to 50 and uh, so we can make like really large platforms so it's just uh, for for your information so you can know what's going on so you can see that this works pretty well uh, we can have quite angled versions of the planks now and that was it for this part so we talked a bit about how we can have a rotated cube and actually have our system work with these rotated cubes. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.